like what we just said uh, in, in our introduction here, you have soaring costs of fuel and other goods here. Many Filipinos at least trying to save up on cash here, prioritizing some expenditures more than the others. How may that impact the travel and leisure sector? And are you already seeing declines in bookings due to that? Any, uh, any increase in oil will uh, invariably uh, affect uh, prices of commodities, commodity services no, across different sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, in the case of uh, tourism, and more particularly for the hotel industry, we have been uh, registering very good occupancy rate in the last uh, couple of months. And this has been driven by the strong demand uh, among Filipinos who are out on uh, summer vacation. Mm -hmm. So we see it as a challenge, but we don't really see it as a, uh, a dampener. We remain optimistic that uh, tourism and uh, the hotel industry particularly is on its way to recovery. Sir, if we compare ourselves to other destinations, particularly in Asia, no, uh, tourism destinations, um, what are they doing when it comes to these kind of surges? And uh, is it you know, time to just say, listen, we have to live with COVID, we cannot keep you know, having changing uh, protocols each time, or we're not ready yet, sir? I think the global stance is that um, we all have to live uh, with COVID. I mean, all the conferences and uh, uh, seminars that we've attended uh, that tackle this issue, that's, also, that's almost a given, that we have to live with it and we have to uh, continue to uh, observe uh, these protocols that I mentioned. Now, when you compare um, the protocols here in the Philippines with what you see in Southeast Asia, and even around the globe, they're really not uh, very much different. Mm. Uh, at all, I think, um, again, in the case of, uh, on the part of the we, we we make sure that we follow these um, these protocols because when when there is a um, a change in alert levels, it's really the accommodation establishment that is uh, hit the hardest, mm -hmm. and we don't want to go back to where we were two years back. Okay, now, Sir Bong, like what you mentioned earlier, much of the output of the hotel sector was buoyed, of course, by uh, summer activities here by uh, Filipino travelers, most especially. How, how much of that as well do you think is still anchored in revenge travel? And how, up to when do you see that extending? Especially now you have at least a um, uh, fuel surcharge for airfares or for air travel already increasing to level 7 from level 4. Previously, that's around 800 pesos for domestic flights. Do you see that impacting growth as well for the sector. Well, there might be a, there might be an, an impact on uh, on domestic travel, but uh, we are hoping that it will be minimal. I think the domestic um, domestic tourism will continue to play a very important role. In the latest report of the Department of Tourism, it said that uh, 85 percent of the business is generated uh, by uh, domestic travel. Obviously, we would also like to see the normalization of inbound travel, particularly from the major markets. Uh, that we have been um, uh, attracting in the last uh, several years before COVID. And I'm talking about Korea, Japan, and China, which uh, collectively account for about 50% uh, of the total inbound volume. So I think we have to strike an optimum balance. We know that there are still some restrictions on uh, international um, uh, travel. And um, for the domestic, you know, for us to really sustain this growth momentum, it's really important uh, that we're able to contain COVID and to make sure that uh, Filipinos who travel around the country maintain uh, uh, and observe health protocols. Okay, sir, is the, you, you, just to follow up on that, is the domestic demand enough to absorb the losses in foreign travel, uh, you know, demand due to restrictions? So we're to put the things in perspective, but then, you know, before the, before the pandemic, um, domestic travel generated about uh, 3 trillion pesos, no? and, and foreign inbound generated about 500 billion pesos. So that's about, you know, uh, times six. So mm -hmm. I think what's important here is that, like I said, we continue to maintain an optimum balance as to the question of uh, whether domestic travel will be able to compensate for mm -hmm. the reduction or the loss of uh, inbound. It will depend uh, on the accommodation establishment. Uh, clearly, if your resort facility that was catering primarily to foreigners or East Asian markets, then you will feel the impact. But I think what's important is that uh, many Filipinos, you talk about revenge travel, we're seeing it in a lot of uh, destinations. And maybe what is compensating for this would be the Filipinos who used to travel abroad, you know, for holidays, etc., would not prefer to travel domestic. And it, that's really keeping uh, many of our rooms, uh, you know, at a good uh, occupancy rate. Now, how much of an uptick have you seen here, at least from the international market, when it comes to accommodation establishments? 
Well, we're happy that uh, the board uh, restrictions on inbound travel um, have been uh, have been addressed by the government. Uh, in the latest report, again, of the Department of Tourism, it uh, mentioned that there are about 682,000 uh, foreigners who entered the country from January to about um, the middle part uh, of June. So this is a, a huge uh, increase over the, I think, 160,000, 170,000 that we recorded for the whole year of uh, 2021. So clearly, we are on our way to recovery. Um, it's really a question of how soon uh, the foreign, uh, our traditional foreign markets um, will return. But I think the pandemic has also um, provided, um, you know, some some shifts in, in travel movements. So now mm -hmm. we're seeing some movements also uh, coming from relatively new markets. But mm -hmm. clearly, in the next uh, few months, it will be domestic travel that will be keeping many of our rooms uh, full.